Welcome to the Jet Set. Lisa Niver's on a mission to accomplish 50 new experiences before she turns 50, and we're checking in with her latest adventure. Changing weather can be tough on any beauty routine, but we've got help. Sabrina Vichai is joining us to share her secrets to looking great while traveling this fall. And I head to Baltimore for some American rye whiskey. All this and more is coming up. You're watching The Jet Set. Meeting a new friend always makes my trip complete. Keeping up with the news about a destination helps me make the most of my trip. Experiencing different cultures, exploring new places, and connecting with diverse people make me a better person. Fall is here and so is travel news on this week's edition of Here's This. A federal judge has ruled that an unruly Hawaiian Airlines passenger now owes the airline more than $97,000 after allegedly slapping a flight attendant after being asked to change a seat, which then forced the plane to divert. James August was traveling with his girlfriend and her three children from Honolulu to New York when the situation occurred. After allegedly slapping the flight attendant, he was restrained and the flight diverted back to Honolulu. Hawaiian Airlines says turning an aircraft around due to a passenger's unruly interference with our flight crew not only creates an inconvenience to all guests on board, but it's extremely costly. We appreciate the efforts of the U.S. Attorney's Office in allowing Hawaiian to recoup some of those hard costs. For the scores of Americans who live or work in North Korea, time's up. The Trump administration ban on travel to the reclusive country went into effect on September 1st. The ban, which makes it illegal to travel to the country with an American passport, only allows for journalists covering North Korea, American Red Cross or International Committee of the Red Cross employees on official business, and other workers with compelling humanitarian considerations to travel there. Now, things that make you go, huh? A health professional in California reported cases where Eclipse viewers sought medical attention because they, are you ready for this? They put sunscreen on their eyeballs to view last month's solar eclipse. Crazy, right? KRCTV.com reported these folks applied the sunscreen because they did not have NASA-approved eyewear. And they weren't the only ones. Doctors in Virginia also have reported patients applying sunscreen to their eyes. But we want to know, did you do anything special to view the eclipse aside from applying sunscreen to your eyes? Or was it just another day for you? We wanted to know, so we sent our producer Brad to hit the streets to find out what you had to say. What did you do during the solar eclipse? Did you go out and, and see it, or was it just another day? Oh, well, it was another day. <laughs> we took our grandson over to the Presbyterian Cemetery where they're having a group from our church. And we went out and spent two hours out there watching the thing get smaller and smaller. But then, of course, it didn't close up. We only had 80% here, right? I, I saw it just a little bit, and then I just kept working. So it, was, it wasn't really, it wasn't, you know, I was expecting like a lot more uh, blackout and everything, but it was just a normal day. It was, it was like just too hot. I was waiting for a total blackout, but I, I didn't see anything, so. That was all. It was cloudy here. There was it, nothing it was, happened for yeah. us. Yeah. Guys, I can't believe that people put sunscreen on their eyeballs. Are, are you, I mean, is that true? Do that? <laughs> yes, doctors are reporting this. That is crazy. But that would really hurt. I, I know. I mean, it's got to burn instantly. Did you guys do anything special for the eclipse? You know what? I laid by the pool and then, you know, enjoyed the sun. It was a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. And then just got out my eclipse glasses at the eclipse time, and then and I was not back your in sunscreen. the sun. <laughs> I didn't use any sunscreen whatsoever, not even on my body. I was in Sonoma, actually, and it was so foggy, so we couldn't see it. It was a little bit cloudy here. I mean, I, I saw it for like a brief moment. I didn't get, to, I didn't have NASA approved glasses. So, you know, I've definitely heard the warnings not to look straight at the eclipse, so I didn't do it. But yeah. I liked how everyone was so into it and so interested in a natural occurrence. I thought that was cool. It was nice. You know, for a brief moment, everything stopped and everyone focused on the eclipse yeah. and not the world around us. You know what? I just wish I had gone to Charleston or some place that was right along the route. That's what I would do next time. Fit to Fly is coming up in 30 seconds. Instead of searching for hours and spending too much, Trivago makes it easy to find the ideal hotel for the best price. Just go to Trivago.com, type in where you want to go, and with two clicks, select your check-in, your check-out dates, and search. You can then easily compare all the hotels that meet your search criteria and find the room that is ideal for you. That's how you can be sure that you'll find the ideal hotel at the best price with Trivago.com. Hotel Trivago. Time for another 
edition of Fit to Fly, and this week we've teamed up with our friends at AARP the magazine for some great tips from the August-September issue. These are some easy items you can pack in your carry-on, and while these are aimed more towards an older crowd, these are all remedies that can be used by anyone, not just our friends that are 50 plus. Okay, first up, they say to cut a 15-inch segment of a pool noodle and stash it in your bag, so while you're traveling, you can place that noodle in the small of your back to ensure proper posture. I've seen Galen do that. Oh, right, and because <laughs> I am the new AARP. I'm 50 plus. You know what? That that noodle thing sounds great, but I can't get one more thing in my bag. So I know it's a it blow is up tough. noodle. It is. It is a great idea, though. Yeah. yeah. It is. A, it would very up some space. Cute. Yeah, but. We'll think about it. Okay, next, pack ginger oil to prevent air sickness. In a study, patients suffering from post-operative nausea found significant relief from inhaling this oil. Wow. That's good. I didn't know that. Well, it makes sense. That's why people drink ginger ale when they feel nauseous. Ah, Get it? Ah, ginger yeah. always is good for everything. Get it? You know what? You're yeah. so good. Okay, avoid road food. Mix together a handful of nuts, dried fruit, and two tablespoons of dark chocolate, maybe even three. You guys know I'm a huge proponent of having snacks with you, and I think that this is something so good. You know, I'm always talking about bringing snacks wherever yeah, yeah. you no, go. No, you're always talking about being hangry and how you yeah. don't like being hangry. <laughs> but you know what? I do love how everywhere you go now, they have those bags that have like 12 pre-packed pre handfuls of nuts. Just put it in your bag yeah. and you're ready to go and you won't be hangry. Yes. Like I always am nonstop. <laughs> yeah. Okay, also pack a golf ball to save your feet. They say tight calves can lead to sore heels. So what they want you to do is sit on the ground, stretch out your legs, and place the golf ball under any tender points in your calf. This is also very good for um, any foot problems you, know, you have, like plantar fasciitis or anything. This may have even been good on your mileage run, where mm -hmm. you were sitting for so long to just like, you know, kind of massage your leg. It works. Yeah, yeah. Would, I don't think it would have helped with my um, sciatica, but it works. almost. You can learn about these tips and much more at aarp.org slash magazine. Sabrina Bachai is here to share fall beauty secrets to travel with, and Galen's going to show us the art of distilling American rye whiskey. It's all coming up after a quick break. Did you bring us any? Are you sharing? I have to sit there and wait. <laughs> Stay connected to the Jet Set from wherever you are in the world. Download the Jet Set app today and fly with us via social media. You may even land on the show. You're back on the Jet Set. Now it's time for us to talk about what topics are trending right now. A good roasting hasn't caused too much of a meltdown at Boston's new wax museum, though maybe if their wax figures melted a bit, they'd look a little bit more like the people they're supposed to. Officials at the Dreamland Wax Museum say that they're embracing the extra attention brought on by waves of online hecklers who have lampooned some of its less than flattering likenesses. Take a look at some of these pictures. These wax figures look nope. nothing nope. like the celebrities they're supposed to. They look scary. They really do. So you're looking at Tom Brady, Donald Trump, Bush Jr., and Senior and Princess Diana. Galen, I mean, come on, I mean, that is uh, like, it's, they're they? creepy. It's so creepy. I mean, the Audrey Hepburn one that I saw doesn't look anything like no. it. But this Princess Diana one, are you sure <laughs> that this isn't Camilla after a rough night out? <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm pretty positive. Well, so it costs $24.95 to go into this museum. So I can't imagine spending that high, that high price on tickets and then finding these wax figures. No. But also they're saying that they don't look like the celebrities they're supposed to because they're based on photos and not actual measurements. So that's why there's a little bit of a description. But everyone knows what those people photos, look like, and it looks nothing like Photos and that have been left out in the rain. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. They just look like oversized candles at yeah. this point, because yeah. they're, they're not worth the money. All right, so check this out. If flying or driving yourself isn't your thing, and you're waiting for Hyperloop, Cabin is the new way to get between Los Angeles and San Francisco. This bus has been transformed into a moving hotel. Everyone on the bus gets their own bed. Tickets run $115 each way. You can't bring anything more than snacks, no alcohol, and no Galen, you can't share beds. But can you hop from bed to bed? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Would you take it? No alcohol? No alcohol. So you're out. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Would you take it? No. Nope. No. You know what? You can take Xanax. <laughs> yes, you can. Okay. <laughs> Aer Lingus has announced it'll no longer be giving out free blankets or earphones to long-haul passengers who travel on their cheapest tickets, saving the airline about $35 on those passengers. So would you rather the cheaper ticket and pay $35 less or the extra frills? Well, it's just like, what else are they going to take away? Well, they, uh. they still do get a free in-flight meal and free carry-on bags. They just need to tell people that they're not getting anything. Make it very yeah. clear. So they can make sure to remember it. You think so? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, check bags, seats selections, blankets, earphones, all cost extra. <laughs> 
Located on the Baltimore waterfront, Sagamore Spirits is serving up more than just drinks. It's giving us a lesson on what makes an American rye whiskey. Brian, it's great to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you as well. This is an amazing facility that you've got here, and anybody can come and visit, right? Absolutely. That's one of the things when we built this, we really had uh, the idea of the visitor experience in mind. That was the main driver for opening up not only the ability to control our product and be able to make a really good, authentic, great whiskey, but make sure people could come in and experience and see what we do day to day. Well, I'm excited about learning how to make some cocktails with the whiskey because any time oh, yeah. is a whiskey time, right? We, we, whiskey is a year-round drink. I think that's important for people to realize that. And we're very proud of one particular one right now that's got you a lot of momentum is the Black Eyed Rye, which, you know, I'm not a big bartender and I can make all these drinks. So we always try and make our drinks really easy, simple, straightforward. People can take these recipes and even make them their own if they want. Just oh, add yeah. a little bit more of this, a little bit more. Have right. a cocktail party, yeah. have fun with it. It's your drink. In any way you want to enjoy it, enjoy it. That's great. That's for sure. So one of the things we like to start off with is our shaker. We'll fill it up with ice. Uh, we'll go ahead and drop some mint leaves in there. We'll go ahead and start off, of course, with our signature 83 proof rye whiskey. We do an ounce and a half of this. The other thing we'll obviously mix it with is our blackberry simple syrup. We'll mix that in as well. We do three quarters of an ounce. Mix that in. Sounding good. Absolutely. And then we do a half ounce lime, so pretty much half a lime squeezed in there. Really nice and fresh. And you like a lot of lime in your drinks. I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I'm not afraid of it. That sounds good. But we'll stick, sounds... stick to the script today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I usually drop a blackberry in there as well for good luck and a little freshness to it. We'll go ahead and shake that up. I like to serve it in a highball myself. Um, of course, garnish with some fresh mint. Oh, Take yeah. Take a strainer. And then. One of the nice things, if you like carbonation, is top it off with three ounces of ginger beer. Ginger beer, see, absolutely, you, lots of good stuff and in we here. Have, of course, it really looks nice when you garnish it with a little. That's few beautiful. Blackberries, uh, extremely refreshing drink. Give that a wow. whirl. Let me know what you think. Mm. That is so delicious. Right. Yes, yes, I don't even have to pretend. This is delicious. People are always yeah. taken back. They'll make wow. up to us and say, you know, I'm not normally a whiskey drinker. Uh, if, they like, if they're a whiskey drinker, they already know how they like it. If they're not normally a whiskey drinker, one of this or my other favorite one, the Maryland Mule, I'll also start them there. And they're always taken back by like, I guess I do like whiskey. We'll go ahead and do two ounces of Sagamore rye. We'll go ahead and do half ounce of lime or about a half a lime squeezed in there. And then this one, just ginger beer away. Oh, Give yeah. it a little yeah. mix. Very simple, very straightforward. Almost all those ingredients can be found at the yeah. grocery store. So, and great, another great drink. Delicious. Delicious. And if you wanted to add a little bit more whiskey in here, you can do that, right? It's your drink. Yeah. Enjoy it any way you want. If you like a little mm. more lime, throw a little mint in there. There's a lot of ways to do a mule. And that's a really simple, easy, quick way. So if people want a nice, easy cocktail, great. If you want to have more fun with it, have more fun with it. Thank you. Thank you very Thanks much. so much. Can I finish these? They're yours. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So you guys know that that Sagamore Spirits is actually owned by the same guy that owns Under Armour. I did not know I did not that. know yeah. that, really. And you know, and it's amazing what they're doing. They are opening a restaurant and a hotel as part of the whole group so that all on the Baltimore waterfront so that you can really make a weekend out of it. And I mean, the, the whiskey is absolutely- You notice how he didn't bring any to share. Yeah. No, it's just for what himself. About? That's, that's fine. You know what, after the show, I can handle it. Oh, I see. I, the last time that we had you all uh -huh. drinking. Well, we've got some tips to keep you looking fly while you travel coming off to the break. Don't go anywhere. Can oh, I just have a sip? Smell it. <laughs> Staying 
fresh on the road is always a challenge and a change of season doesn't make things any easier. But here to help us stay looking fly while traveling is journalist and blogger Sabrina Bachai. Sabrina, welcome back to the show. Thank you. You are just in time because it is turning into that beautiful fall weather, but everyone's skin is changing. So mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about the things that you've brought because I can't wait to try all of them. So you still want to maintain that fresh summer glow. You want to look bronzy through the, through the fall and through mm -hmm. the winter. So one thing I recommend when traveling is taking a palette that you can use for many things. So this one has neutral eye tones for the fall, Ooh, like that. bronzers, mm -hmm. and it's also in this handy dandy cardboard thing. So if it falls, it won't break. That's very good to travel for. Can you just open it just one more time? So you can use this. These are like... These are bronzers. Uh -huh. And then these are all eyeshadows and also for eyebrows as well. Yep. So it's kind of like an all-in-one. Yep. And it's, and it's so pretty. Uh, yeah, it's really pretty too. And you don't have to carry a bunch of things. All you need is this. I like it. What you got next? Perfect. Next is, even though it's the fall, mm -hmm. the sun is still out, you want to protect your skin. Mm -hmm. And I love this thing. It's a mineral sunscreen powder. So what you do is you just turn it up and you just brush it all over your face and it's SPF 45. And TSA is those. not going to ding you for this because it's powder. Yeah. So it's perfect. I love these, especially I get so shiny. So yeah. throughout the day or being on set or being on an airplane, I absolutely love those. Yeah, and this is perfect. It's so easy to throw in your wall, throw in your purse or anything like that. It's I love those. Okay, what's next? So this I love because I love being bronzy and having like contour in my cheek. So mm -hmm. this is a small mini bronzer. So it's perfect. Again, it's that like very lightweight packaging mm -hmm. so it won't break if you drop it or anything yeah. like that. So you just grab a little brush and throw it on your cheeks and you look like you have a summer right. glow. This company, Tarte, they have, so it's like indestructible yeah, packaging. packaging. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Okay. All right, what's up? So fall time is the perfect time to start using retinols. So retinols help turn over cell, has cell turnover faster. So this one is, um, it's a over-the-counter retinol, mm -hmm. so use it two to three times a week. And this bottle is perfect for traveling. So perfect. if you're going on a long trip, you take mm -hmm. this, throw it on your face at night, and it's good to go. And retinols are good for when you're not in the sun so much. Yeah, so when you're not in the sun. Excellent. Um, but if you have to be in the sun, make sure you use sunscreen or sometimes an umbrella or whatever you can. Or put some of this powder on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I also love using a face wash that's not really drying and not really sudsy. So this is a really creamy face wash. Um, and this again is a perfect travel size and it's just a one step cleanser. Oh, perfect. Throw some water in your face, mm -hmm. rub this on, your makeup comes off. So and it doesn't dry everything doesn't out. Doesn't dry everything out. Good. Just because it's really sudsy doesn't mean it's good for your skin. You could be stripping the oils away. Sabrina, you always have the good <laughs> information. And something obviously very important uh -huh. is keeping your skin hydrated. So this is a moisture cream and it's so thick, so a little mm -hmm. bit goes a long way. Just take it, couple dots in your face, mm -hmm. rub it in morning and night. So do you just kind of do like yeah. one, two, three, four, yeah. and then just, just kind rub of rub it in, in, let it dry, and, and ready then for throw, the day. throw your sunscreen on right a little, after. A little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of that. Yeah, okay, yeah. good. <laughs> and then I always like taking extra nail polishes um, because just in case, you know, you chip your nails and stuff, and this is a great fall color. Great fall color. So it's, it's actually, you can't see it right now, but it's a dark purple, dark blue. Ooh, perfect for fall. So it's perfect for fall. Good. And of course, fall lipstick. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite color for fall is like a dark pink, oh, like, like pink that. orange color. So this is actually a really good fall color and too. And that can kind of go right thing. Yeah. Hey, Sabrina, where can people find more information? You can go to my blog, www.sabrinavichai.com. Yay, and congratulations on your engagement. Thank you. Okay, Bobby, what do you got for us? Because I'm going to play with all of these things. <laughs> It's time to check in with our adventure correspondent, Lisa Niver, to see her latest adventure on her quest to find 50 new and exciting things to do before she turns 50. This week, she's in Monaco exploring Formula E. I'm coming to you from Monaco, the second smallest country on our planet after Vatican City, and for me, country number 97. It's one of the most sustainable, focused countries on our planet. They're very concerned about our oceans, they're doing coral research. It's the Formula E, the first 100% fully electric car race. It was really phenomenal. There's 20 different pilots or drivers for 10 companies. I got to interview some of them. I got to see the cars. I loved Formula E. Here's it's time for dinner at Cipriani. Monaco is close to Italy and France. I loved my Branzino dinner. What did I pick for dessert? Chocolate cake. Yum. I'm at Elsa at the Monte Carlo Beach Hotel and it is beautiful here. Sounds of the sea, sparkling champagne. I'm ready for my lunch. We're 
are standing where the Formula E cars are going to race on Saturday. This is incredible. Up close and personal in Monaco. It's the day before Formula E in Monaco and they're putting the cars together right here behind me. Wondering where to watch the famous Fairmont hairpin turn at the Grand Prix in Monaco, right here at the Fairmont. Look at this incredible view right at Nikki Beach. I'm gonna show you around my incredible room at the Monte Carlo Bay Hotel. Here is the incredible view from the balcony. Are you looking for a spectacular place to visit? I highly recommend the Monte Carlo Bay Hotel. Look at this place. Tonight, I'm gonna to be going by helicopter from Monaco to Nice. You know, I are ready to fly. He knows what he's doing. I hope to visit Monaco again. What destinations offer the best deals on travel right now? I've got the answers coming up after a quick break. I'm guessing it's Seattle. Probably Maine. What do you think? If you ask me that one more time, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta wait. Welcome back to the Jet Set, where we're sending you to Asheville, North Carolina on this week's edition of the Go Powered by Travago.com. Go walk the Asheville Urban Trail. Showcasing the city's unique past, this 1.7 mile trail features 30 stops, each with a sculpture capturing an important person or a moment in the area's history. And it's free to all. Go explore Pisgah National Park. This 500,000 acre park offers hundreds of miles of trails, numerous waterfalls, and breathtaking vistas. And finally, go stay at the Inn on Biltmore Estates. Modern luxuries and views of the Blue Ridge Mountains have earned it a AAA four diamond rating and a top rating from Travago.com users. Looking for more travel information? Find it at room5.travago.com. Next week, Captain Laura's back and Galen's taking us to Chesapeake Bay. Bye, everybody. Bye.